CJ, just really quick. You're a black person. Are you hunted at the university? You know, I don't, I don't feel hunted at this university, but I guess the difference between me and some people here is that I don't choose to be a victim, Charlie, which I think, which I think is the biggest problem we have here today are people who wake up every single day looking for a reason to be oppressed. Look What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl and if you're scholars today, I'm back again with another video from Charlie Keck. So today, Charlie Keck debates college students who ask him, should we judge people by their skin color? Okay, so guys, up there, do let's get started. Hi, um, my name is Erin. Uh, I'm a student here, and I'm an African American Studies major. But um, one thing I do agree with that you haven't said tonight is the school choice thing. I do agree that you should be able to go to a school that's outside of your zip code. I went to a great high school. That's exactly why I was able to come here. But um, my other question is that um, what are some examples of critical race theory because I know like the another question that another girl came she said that she had to learn CRT in her sorority and what I what I thought it was is that you know you should um know how to interact with people of other races because I went to a school where it's you know mostly Caucasian people and I had to learn how to interact with other people so is it something like that or is it something deeper that we don't really know no uh, it's it's super simple so let me just kind of ask you I bet we agree do you do you support black only dormitories well when I think of black only dormitories I believe that you're talking about like maybe HBCUs because it's nope. mostly black people no no no, no where no. are these Western Washington University public school in Washington has black okay. only dormitories. Is that something you would support? <laughs> I mean, I would probably live in one, but I mean, that i Wait, I'm, wait so I you, mean, you don't want to live with white people? I didn't say, I mean, I have, I, I didn't say that. But um, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard. Sometimes like I have most, I mean, you know, I have a lot of white friends or whatever, but I, I sometimes, I mean, it's hard to fit in here. Well, um, when you go here and you're a different color, I mean, it's not hard well, to- what, what, Would you support white only dormitories? It's, it's some some around here, not many black people go here, so it technically is white only if you think about it. No, it's not. <laughs> no, I mean, well, let me let me ask you another question. I, didn't, I don't think anybody here would. Oh, well, some people might, you know, support that. I mean, I never said I supported yeah. any only kind of thing. I no, I'm, I'm asked. That's why I'm asking, right? I think yeah. that you know. Do you support white only? Dormitories? Absolutely not. I think it would be I, racist. It's and preposterous. Disgusting. I believe that. And guess will. what? Black only dormitories are racist too. Uh, I mean, I, day, I guess so. I might live in one if I could, but. I can't, so. Okay, well, let me ask you another question. Uh, at Columbia University, they have black-only graduation ceremonies. Would you support that? I mean, if it's, well. is it just like, so are they not able to graduate with the white people? Is that why they can't? Well, they have a separate ceremony just for black people. I mean, I guess it's kind of like the separate ceremony, ceremony when they don't want to go to graduation. They want to do it online. That's how I so, think of it. So do you think segregation is evil and wrong? I mean, Black people weren't even able to join sororities here until 2012, so not the PhD one. So, you know, I, segregation here. I George just, Wallace I just in front know of the that's doors. not true, and like, th there's okay, when when were um, PhD sororities and fraternities desegregated? 2013. Oh, so you're not trying 2012. to tell me that black oh, people were not able to join a fraternity? Yes. Because do, you of color George, skin. do you remember George Wallace too? Segregation yeah. now, segregation, you know, for all, yeah. forever. That's what that you're, as well. That's what you're espousing when you say that black-only graduation ceremonies or dormitories. Black-only graduation uh, ceremonies are the least of our problems, least of yours. Do you think that you'll be able to go to an HBCU and have this same turnout and have these same people? I'm not. I'm, let well, me tell you. I would hope so, but I mean. So what would you say to them? But, but here's the say? thing. Oh I'm sorry, what? What would you say to a... Uh, Room full of black Charlie. people about You know what I would say? Theory. I'd say your skin color means nothing. You're made in the image of God. You're right. But oh I completely agree. But I can tell you I can tell you right now. I can tell you right now. I'm a Christian. I believe in God, but I, I have been going here for three years. I'm a junior. I have Mo oh, is it my? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I have most definitely faced racism and prejudice, no matter what I believe in, and it's it's just really hard to sit up here and listen to. People come up here and say, oh, I don't want to learn CRT. It's just making you able to interact with other types of people. I have well, no problem. No, it's not. So let me just tell you. So at the Georgia public schools in Atlanta, they put black sixth graders in one classroom and white sixth graders in another classroom. Is that evil? I've never seen. Can you show me a video of those, Happy of those to. kids? It, Atlanta segregation of public schools. Well, it was please national show me. News. I have, I, not to interrupt, but I have, I have family members that go to, to schools in these areas and I also have 
people who live in yeah. redlining districts right, but where they asking, can't go you, to good schools. Do you support segregation? No, I do not. Okay, we agree. Therefore, okay. black-only dormitories and black-only graduation ceremonies and putting sixth graders in one classroom based on skin color or the other, any those, are out, those are outgrowths of CRT. So learning, so okay, so tell me, give me an example of what critical race theory is. I don't. So that was my I'll, first I'll, I'll be happy to tell you. So critical race theory is an emphasis at saying skin color matters, that the color of someone's skin is important in judging the value of the human being. I get that, but if I were, to, if you were teaching a class that is like that was that was talking about critical race theory, we were all sitting here. Yes. What would your what would your lecture be? Like, what? Well, tell me what are you, what are your points? Like, who is this author that you're so reading? So Herbert Marcuse. And okay. an author by the last name of Spinoza wrote a book called One Dimensional Man in the okay. 1960s. Herbert Marcuse came from the uh, Frankfurt School in the 1930s, and he started this at Columbia University. Coming out of a Marxist belief of power dynamics, right. he believed that, that power struggles were not just the rich versus the poor, but also black versus white. And he wanted to expand the kind of conversation to also engage racial dynamics. Inherent in critical race theory is a belief that people are not individuals, they're members of tribes. Inherent in the idea of critical race theory is that there is no free speech or reason or scientific inquiry. These are white supremacist Eurocentric constructs that have been put yeah. into the Western world. And, and the one that is the one that I think that is um, most prevalent, CRT believes racism is everywhere, that racism is the norm that racism is within our systems, it's in our language, it's in our customs, it's in our codes, it's in all these sorts of things. Now that's a super quick version of what CRT is, so happy to no. dive into that more, but I think it's, we don't have to overcomplicate it, which is, do you think people should be judged based on the color of their skin? It's not that I think that, but it's that it's happening, and you cannot ignore that I might not be treated the same as right. him as so he walks. You're to right; the door. it is happening. Like at Coca-Cola, they say they need to train their employees to abolish whiteness. At AT&T, they said they would need to train their employees to get rid of whiteness. We have a supply and demand issue with racism in our country. We have an incredibly low supply of racism and an incredible demand to try to fulfill it. So we've created racism where it doesn't exist and try to turn everyone into many racists against each other, which has now manifested itself into a massive anti-white movement in our country where I believe more than anything else, we should care about character, not skin color. Do you agree with that? It's not, I don't, I don't believe that you understand what I'm saying. It's not that I don't agree with not, um, I'm sorry. Oh, it's not that I know, don't agree with, um, you know, what you just said, but you have to realize that it's black people are like white people are not being hunt, haunted, hunted after. Y'all can come here and live a great freaking life. Alabama is a safe haven. The PhD what? fraternities and sororities are a safe haven you, for you white people. You think you're being hunted? I, let me tell okay, y'all can laugh, but until you have walked as a black person on this campus, y'all y'all truly y'all truly don't understand. And I under, and I, I have I've gone to school with white people my whole life. I've I've so, gone so but I, it's I, just I, I will end with this. Um, you're not being hunted at the University of Alabama and there is no boogeyman that's trying to get you. It's not you're making you're making you you're making it a, seem you live in the least racist country in the history of the world. You're in Ala you're in has, Alabama. You are literally yes. in the the that, place where it's, it's not okay. You yes, can't you mean, you mean you the can't place that has given you more talking time than any other person here and where they wait, sit you think respectfully. You're supposed to shut me down and be like, go sit down? I mean, of yes, course I'm going to talk to you. That would have happened a hundred years ago. You're right. A hundred oh. years ago, you might not have been allowed to come into this room, so which would have been. To thank to you because that's which would have been happening? evil. No. Instead, we are here, we're creating a movement to say we never want to go back to the segregation that once existed in this country that is now being pushed by people in corporate America, in academia, and other places. We want to strive for a country that cares about character and the soul and the spirit of the individual, not on tribes, not on the melanin content in people's skin. And I will say this as compassionately as I can, is that you are not being hunted as a black person in America. There is not a single statistic that affirms that. There's not a single data point. Instead, the opposite is true. We are the least racist, most accepting, multiracial country in the history of the planet. And I pray one day you'll be thankful to live in that country. Okay. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Um, everybody. CJ, CJ, come here. 
really quick. I have a question. Come here. Go right there. Right there. So CJ, just really quick. You're a black person. Are you hunted at the university? You know, I don't, I don't feel hunted at this university, but I guess the difference between me and some people here is that I don't choose to be a victim, Charlie, which I think, which I think is the biggest problem we have here today are people who wake up every single day looking for a reason to be oppressed, looking for a reason to cry and make an excuse about why they're not in a position to go win. I don't see the color of my skin as a disability. I see it as simply an accessory that I couldn't control. I've been black all my life. I've been black today and I'm thriving here. I think that's a, that's a roll tide right there. right? I don't know. And so CJ, let me ask you, CRT, yeah. racist? It's not just racist, it's the exact iteration of white supremacy just in reverse. I think it's important that we start teaching young people not to hate other people because of the color of their skin. We can teach black people to be proud of who they are without telling white people they should be ashamed of who they are. You know? Amen. Yeah. So, closing thought, CJ. Is this trying to divide the country? It's, it's not only trying to divide the country, it's trying to break apart the foundation upon which it was built. You know, people forget the words of MLK, Rosa Parks, all those people who fought so hard for us to be united country where we didn't see the color of one's skin, but, the, but their character. This is about taking us away from the vision and the dream of Martin Luther King and just taking us to the dream of Kamala Harris. And I don't want to live that dream. Amen. CJ, you're a great American. Give it up Thank for CJ, so everybody. So good. Wow, I love this. Honestly, I love how could we played the last part like over and over and over and over and again. Cause, yeah, it's to the last thing he said. He said, I I've been black my whole life and I'm black now. I'm black today and I'll be black tomorrow. And I choose not to be a victim. You know, sometimes I understand um, his experience might not be the same as um, anybody's experience. Cause we are individual difference, you know, some might have different you know, experiences in life, you know, but, but like, you choose not to be victims, you know, I think it's always about the mentality, I think, um, this call, this, um, everything that the lady said before is like an out outmoded things, and it keeps, it is stuck in our minds, like, you know, it is stuck in our minds like viruses, and, and it keeps on eating our brain up, and we choose not to think for it. We choose not to move on with life, you know. And if we, if that happens to us, like it pulls us back. I always say, if you're stuck with this mentality, like racism mentality, because you had experience in the past, or because someone said, someone um, explains their experiences, like you know, bad experiences to you in the past, and you put that in your mind and you keep on moving with it, you know, it becomes like, should I say, uh, um, um, I don't know, but it becomes a virus in your lives and it keeps on eating you. So honestly, I love CJ. I really love what he said. He's black. You know, obviously one way or the other, you, you're going to experience something. Someone might say um, something that you feel like is being a risk, but like you choose not to be a racist. Like you choose not to be a victim, you know, you choose to overcome your fears. You know, you need to be proud of who you are. And basically, I love what Charlie is doing. CRT is something that I've been following for a while and I think... It's a good movement, you know. It helps mankind to... He never said racist has, like, does not exist. It really exists, you know. It has been there since. And growing up, we've heard a whole lot of stories, people having different kind of experiences in life. And it's true. It has been there, you know. It is, it's been there. And it's why we keep on having this movement. And it's why we keep on doing campaigns. I mean, advocating towards this. Because... People, people, you cannot control what people think and you cannot control people's behavior, but you can control your own life. You can co choose not to be victim. And with um, CJ's mentality, you could see he could be able to thrive to America or be able to thrive, thrive to life without hindrances because he choose not to be the victim. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not saying um, what, our first lady said was um, absolutely wrong. She has her own experience in her mind. And I'm, I'm really surprised that these kind of mentalities still exist in this modern, modern world. You know, things are growing. World is changing. World is being dynamic. You know, things are changing. And you still expect us to have only black dormitories, only white dormitories. You still expect us to have only 
black graduations like it doesn't make sense why should that happen like why should that even happen in this i feel like those things are outmoded if some countries still do this then i'll say shame on you like it's a shame that this happened if we still have this only black dormitories only white dormitories but maybe they can have their own excuse of doing that but with the excuse of it being a racism or like avoiding some kind of race then i'll say it's a shame you know this has to go on up to now so i don't think me i don't i don't think we should have a black only dormitories or white only dormitories because it's outmoded you know life is changing people are changing and it's hard time we encourage our kids because i always say racism is not born with it's been learned because these kids you you give birth to child and they are so innocent they don't know they don't know why what, what is the difference between white and black they don't care because they don't know they have no idea as they grow up and they realize that society how the society is they realize oh, okay people do discriminate i mean you are, you are you are different from me so it's hard time we do encourage the, the younger ones to i mean to have a positive thinking to have a positive mind to see each other to see human humanity as the same because i'm human you're human what difference is between me and you the skin color for which i'm proud with the there is been you need to be proud of who you are whether white or black you need to be proud of you who you are and see each other because we we all i mean created by one person we're all created by god in his own image you know so wh why do we see ourselves why why do why do my skin color has to i mean differentiate me or prevent me of having something i could have why why do my skin color has to i mean prevent me of going to certain schools prevents me from having certain opportunities that i would have gotten you know it's just crazy so honestly i'm i'm surprised you know it's that's, that's why i always say i love watching this type of things because it makes me know what actually people think it makes me know the life you know meaning of life and what what is actually going on in life and i'm so surprised and honestly i'm so surprised that this lady the first lady had that mentality you know had that mentality it's crazy and i love what cj did an incredible job you know you can be black Pe people are being black but yes they, they they've made it in life they are exceeding in life they are doing the most they are doing greater things and it could be you it could be me so i just hope and urge we, we all have that positive mindset if we are having this kind of mindset in our mind you know i think the idea we get rid of it the better because what you're thinking will honestly determine your next step so if we have this positive mindset i think our life will be affected positively so i think yeah i gave um, cj thumbs up for what he said he is black he has been black his whole life and he chose not to be a victim to racism or whatever is going on on this world in this world so i think yeah um let me know what you actually think about this video honestly like seriously let me know what you think about this video if you have, if you have any experience any suggestion any recommendation for me too i'll be so glad to see it in the comment section and if you're new to my channel welcome don't forget to click on the subscription button for more notifications thanks for watching